Hi all, today we will explore the JavaScript API Mutation Observer. The Mutation Observer API can be used to watch for any change in an HTML element. So these changes can include the text content change or the attribute change or the children change inside the element. So for exploring the Mutation Observer, I have created an index.html and an index.js file. So inside the index.html, I have created a div and added the content editable attribute so that we can click and edit the content. So now here I have given an ID called element. So using this, I will be querying this div and I will be observing it using the mutation observer. So now let's go to the code. So inside this, on the document, ready state change I have added a listener and when the document is ready I will be adding the logic to get the div so I am using the document dot get element by id and I am passing the id so now I, now I will get a reference to the div so before this I will create an observer using the mutation observer so i will create a new instance of the mutation observer so this will accept a callback as the parameter so here i will create a callback so inside the callback it's basically an anon anonymous function and inside that I am adding a console.log so as the first parameter within this callback we will be receiving the list of changes that have happened in the element so I am giving it as change list and I am displaying it here and the second parameter is the observe itself so that I am not displaying I will just add here now I will pass the callback inside the mutation observer so now we add the observer so observer has a method called observe so we can pass the element reference to the observe method as the first parameter and the second parameter we have multiple options so let's explore one by one so if you go here you can see that there are options called attribute filter attribute old value and attributes which are related to the changes in the attribute and character data and character data old value which is related to the text content and the child list is the uh, related to the changes in the children and subtree uh, we will explore all this so first let us try out the attributes key. so we can pa pass the boolean value so i am setting it as true so now let's go ahead and run our application so I am refreshing the application now let's put a debugger point so I am adding a debugger here inside the console now I try to change the attribute so basically we are watching for the attribute so let's inspect the element and here I am trying to remove the content editable so now you can see that when I removed the attribute the breakpoint got hit and inside let's watch this change list so it's a list and inside that we get a mutation record so since we track the attribute the type of the mutation record will be attributes and the important key fields are the target so the target is the target div which got changed and the attribute name that got changed that is a content editable and here there is a field called old value so since um, we didn't give the field here like we have an option called attribute old value and Un until we set this as true we won't be able to access the old value of the attribute 
so since I didn't set anything here it will return a null so now let's try it with setting the value as true so now again let's refresh the application so now I am going to again modify the uh, attribute now let's modify the ID actually so I am changing the name of the uh, ID to LM1 so now again the breakpoint is hit and you can see that the attribute name is different that is ID now and the old value we get the value as LM so this is the way in which we can access the old value of the attribute now there is one more option that is related to attribute that is the attribute filter so uh, here what we can do is we can pass a list of attributes which we need to observe so let me add the ID here so now let's go to the application and I will try to remove the content editable attribute so now you can see that the breakpoint didn't hit because it is not observing the content editable now in case I again change that ID it will hit the breakpoint since we are observing it in the attribute list so now let's try out the child list option so I am setting it as true and inside the index.html you can see that we have a b tag and within that we have an i tag so now what I am going to do is I am going to remove this entire b tag and check whether any um, breakpoint is hit so let's refresh our application so first I will remove the i tag so I have removed the i tag but you can see that the breakpoint did not hit and now I will completely remove the b tag so now the breakpoint is hit so if you change uh, or check the change list you can see that the mutation record is of type child list and here we have a key called removed nodes inside that you will see that the b tag is getting listed but you would have seen that when I removed the i tag that did not get reflected so that is because the child list will check only for the immediate child so inside this div the immediate child is the b tag but the i is coming inside the b so that won't be detected so in order to detect um, grandchildren elements what we need to do is we have to set the subtree option now let's try it again one more time so now I am trying to remove the i tag so now when the i tag is completely removed immediately it will hit the breakpoint now again the type is child list and the target now has changed it is actually coming from inside the b tag and the removed node is i so similarly we have another key called added nodes so in case I add the i tag the breakpoint will hit here and the i tag will be listed inside the added nodes so now let's try that I am pressing control Z. so now what happened you can see that it is trying to add the i tag now the added nodes will have the i tag and everything else will remain the same now let's try out the options related to the text content so initially I am setting the character data as true now when I try to remove a content immediately the change is listed here so the type is character data and the target now will be actually text so here we can see the text current text content and in case we need to see the previous text content we have the old value here but in order to access it we need to set the key as character data old value so once we set it now let's refresh our application now when I try to remove the text a so here again the the current text will be displayed here and the old value which was present inside the text content that will also be listed here in the 
old value field. Now we also have an option to disconnect our mutation observers. So here let me add a button and the button is closed and here I have added a click handler. So here let's add a function called remove observers and inside this what we are doing is we will be accessing the pending list of records. So the observer has a method called take records. So what it will return is it will return a list of mutation records which are pending to be processed. So I am assigning this to a variable pending and I will disconnect the observer. So we have a disconnect method. So using this the observer has been disconnected and after this it will not be checking for any changes in our element. So once it is disconnected we can check whether any action needs to be done based on the length of the array. So in case anything is pending we can call our callback and pass the pending as the parameter. So now let's try, try this out. So the close button is there. So initially let us try and edit something. So now you can see that the breakpoint is getting hit. Now I am clicking the close. So now you can see that whatever changes I make it is not getting observed. Hope you are able to get a clear picture about the JavaScript API mutation observer. See you soon. Thank you.